It is so wonderful to see you all here this evening. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer Garrett, and I'm the Executive Vice President of the National Enterprise Group. I seem to be coming sort of in and out. Hold on. Now you can hear me? Okay, I can move my shoulder forward. Um, I am thrilled to welcome you all here tonight. We are going to be talking to Melissa, baked by Melissa, who is the lovely lady next to me. And she has stories that are going to inspire all of us tonight in many ways. Um, oh, thank you. I'll take that. I'm going to do those fast when I turn this off. Thank you. Okay. Does this work? Yes. So just by way of background, for those of you that don't know, XO Group is the parent company of The Knot, The Nest, The Bump, and Gig Masters. And we were founded in 1996 by a female co-founder. So really, empowering women has always been at the core of what XO Group is about. We started the Founder Series to really celebrate that. And tonight, we are going to be talking to a very, very successful and inspiring founder, Melissa. So, let's get right into it. Melissa, tell us a little bit about yourself, your early career, how you started your journey. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Melissa Benishai. I'm President and Chief Product, Product Officer at Baked by Melissa. I am 33 years old and I have a daughter who's 19 months. When I was 24 years old, I was working in advertising at Deutsch as an assistant media planner on the Tylenol account. I was not passionate about my job, which showed because I was fired. I always wanted to go into business with my older brother, who is my best friend and an entrepreneur. He had actually just moved into his very first office in Manhattan the day I was fired. He started an interactive agency with our childhood friend, Matt, building websites for people. So when I went back to my cubicle to like pack up my personal belongings, I just picked up the phone, I called my brother. And I, crying, I said, I, I was fired. He, without hesitation, he said, don't worry, it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Come to my office. So I did. I didn't need any of that crap in my cubicle. <laughs> and we went, and we, we were just like sitting in his office, me, him, and Matt. And he said, I got it. Go home, bake your cupcakes. We'll start a business out of it. I, at the time, was baking my tie-dye cupcakes for anyone and everyone. If I loved you and it was your birthday and I love a ton of people, I baked you my tie-dye cupcakes for like two years. So the day I was fired, like I already had this product that I was passionate about that I loved. I just never saw it as a business opportunity, which is ironic because my brother and I would literally spend hours of our time together like talking about new business ideas. Anyway. The crazy part is, is that I listened and I actually went home from his office the same day that I was fired and I baked cupcakes, 250 cupcakes, because I knew like if we're going to start a business, I had to have more than my one flavor of tie-dye. So the night I was fired, I baked s'mores, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, and tie-dye cupcakes. And my best friend's little sister was staying with me for the summer. She was interning at Allison Broad PR. Allison was like a celebrity to me and and you know I saw her on like the hills and like she, you know she was on those like TV shows a woman entrepreneur her name is love oh my gosh everything so I sent Carly into work the next day with these cupcakes that I made you know if nothing else Allison would try them I hoped and that would be cool how so, many did you send in like a Box? turkey basing pan <laughs> of them like 50 at least and sure enough, the next morning, she's texting me off the hook, like, oh my god, Allison ate your cupcakes. She's obsessed with them. She wants to put me in touch with her, she wants to put you in touch with her caterer. Oh my god, great, like, dream come true. That same day, the day after I was fired, I get a call from Allison Broad's caterer, like, hello, Melissa, this is Ben Zion, thick as rally accent. I'd like to bring you to my house for a tasting. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. 
I just got a tasting with Allison Broad's caterer. I was fired from my job yesterday. <laughs> so I hung up the phone. I ran back to my brother's office, told him, oh, my God, we got this opportunity that we have to take advantage of. You know, like, what, what do we need? What, what could I go in there with? So we decided we needed a name and a logo. We literally came up with Baked by Melissa in minutes. I wanted the company to be called Baked, a natural extension of myself. And <laughs> my brother was like, why do you know Allison Broad? Because of the personal tie to her company, like your name should be in it. So we decided on Baked by Melissa, perfect. Um, his business partner at the time was like twiddling around on his monitor and like literally just turns around the screen, he's like, what do you think of this for the logo? And it was like, the exact same logo we have today with that cool like handwritten font. I think I cried, like it was beautiful. Went, I, that was it, we had a name and a logo, now I could go on the tasting, like we really have a business and he, like we'll see what happens. So I got flat pastry boxes from the bakery across the street from my apartment. I was living on 34th and 2nd and the Clover Deli was right across the street and I would go there every night on my way home from work and get like two big size cupcakes because I couldn't decide between chocolate and vanilla so the two owners knew me. I was like, hey guys, like, can I have some flat bakery boxes? Sure. I pasted the logo on the top of the box, went to the caterer with my cupcakes for a tasting. He loved them. And I started doing events with him less than a week after I was fired. And in that short period of time, my brother um, and his business partner came up with a, a very temporary website, bakedbymelissa.com. We, would, we shot all of the images for the website on my coffee table, we just like put a white bed sheet down and put the cupcakes on top, used my Canon point and shoot camera, um, ordered business cards that had you know our new logo and baked by Melissa, but also my name, my cell phone number, and my home address. So when we put the cupcakes out at the first event, I put the, the business cards in front, and if you tasted the cupcake and you liked it, you could pick up a business card that drove you to the website, and then you could place an order for 100 cupcakes or more. Um, through PayPal that I would bake and box and deliver by foot from my apartment and that's really <coughs> how I started the company with amazing so, people. That's an unbelievable story. What a whirlwind. How long was the phase where you were baking the cupcakes in your apartment and shipping and how long before the retail location did that? I started baking out of my apartment like July 1st let's say. I just fired like June 28th. Um, so for seven months I did that. And I would bake and then I would put them in the box and I put the sticker on the box and I would take the subway to do all the deliveries. And then in November of 2008, um, I used to go on all these tastings and you know, each one was a great opportunity in and of itself. One day I went on a tasting to Cafe Barry, which was on the corner of Broadway and Spring Street, which is now Nike Town. And uh, the owner, like, walked down the stairs and popped a tie-dye cupcake in his mouth and he was like, wow, I love you, I'm storing you in my phone as cupcake and I'll be in touch. And cupcake. he wound up um, getting in touch with me like later on in that, that summer when I was working out of my apartment and he was like, hey, cupcake, I'm Danny Omari from Cafe Barry, I have an idea, let me know what you think. I do the holiday market in Union Square every winter. It's like this six week period of time, you like put up a booth, we usually sell soup and hot cocoa. We do okay, but I think your cupcakes can make a killing. How about you move into my empty space here at Cafe Barry, like my kitchen prep space. You could do all of your baking here. Sell me your cupcakes at cost. I'll brand the booth baked by Melissa in the holiday market and we can see what happens with it. So that's when I moved out of my apartment into the kitchen of Cafe Barry to start doing baking and actually hired our very first employee who was, I mean, you can't make this shit up. He was a stripper by night. <laughs> he um, had a single with Snoop Dogg. Like, I've seen the music video. He, like, go, like does this with dollar bills. Um, and the two of us baked, like, 15 hours a day, seven days a week for the duration of the holiday market in Union Square. The product speaks for itself. It's, I, I still eat it every day, so... We sold out and we wound up opening in the Bryant Park and Columbus Circle holiday markets. In that six week period of time, you know, we had this amazing opportunity. And then after that, because it was only for six weeks, we knew we had this unbelievable opportunity that we had to take advantage of. So in true Bake by Melissa fashion, we opened a bite sized pickup window that was attached to Cafe Barry, March 5th, 2009, opening day. We got somebody to work the booth so I could like chill for a second because I was like baking and doing everything. 
So I'm sitting at the bar Cafe Barry, which is literally right next to the door to this window, and I'm um, freaking out, like, who's going to stop at this hole in the wall and buy cupcakes that they've never heard of before. We were so fortunate to be written up by Daily Candy, which was like the first online newsletter of its time, and they had their weekend guide that came out on Thursday mornings. And so like, where to go to eat, shop, hang, whatever. They included Baked by Melissa. We had like a line around the corner. It's really like crazy. The, I'm sitting at the bar, so that is happening, and David Z is sitting next to me, who maybe some of you know David Z's shoe stores. Um, they're like around Manhattan. So he was a celebrity to me. I'd never met him before. Like, couldn't believe this great entrepreneur is sitting next to me. Um, he's like shooting the shit with the bartender, and, and he says to the bartender, who is this beautiful girl, and the bartender looked me up and down and he said, that's my wife. I'd never met him before, and that's how I met my husband. <laughs> Literally, True while story. like I just I'm opening my cupcake store, like people lo like crazy, like crazy. You can't make this shit up. So <laughs> now we're married, and we have a beautiful daughter, and he works with me at Bake by Melissa. I conceptualize and create all new products, and he brings it to production, and it's so easy. All of it, working with your husband, and you know, doing it all. <laughs> Sounds dreamy. <laughs> um, Piece of cake. <laughs> so what happened next? You had your little window at Cafe Bari, and then how did you expand to now having, are you 13 retail 13 shops retail now? locations, and we also also have great like e-com, bakebymuscle.com. We ship our product nationwide. We offer pickup and delivery in Manhattan. We're on Seamless. We just started selling through Fresh Direct and Food Kick. Um, we operated out of the window in Soho for almost a year. So we opened March 5th, 2009, and then in January of 2010, we opened our second location, which was like a real store that you could walk into on 14th Street between 5th and University. Um, but that was like a whole new thing. And when we opened that location, we actually moved our baking from Soho to um, 10,000 square feet in North Bergen, which is still where we do our baking today. We got more space, and that was like I remember walking into this like big room facility. Like we're never going to fill this. This is huge. It's crazy, and we outgrew it in like a year. Because after we opened Union Square in January, we opened our third location in November. Um, in the Hyatt in Grand Central on 42nd between Park and Lex and then soon after that in April we opened our fourth location in the Fashion District which is my favorite store it's like big and great energy and yeah it's just pretty incredible so kudos to you I think we should applaud for Melissa and so you had to do a lot to get from there from here to there and one of the things you had to do was hire people. And many of us in this room are probably managers. What's your special sauce for hiring? What, what, do you, what process do you go through? How do you find the right people? And how many do you now employ? We now employ roughly 250 people. We have retail, we have a bakery, we have corporate, we do it all. Um, the people are the most important part. I guess it's intuition. I mean, even when you have a great interview with somebody, it's still 50-50, as my dad likes to remind me. Um, but really what we look for is um, hard-working, like-minded, capable people who get shit done, who are like super happy and positive. And the energy is so much of it, like the energy that you feel when you're interacting with this person, especially because we have retail and we have customer happiness and it's all about our customer. Um, but really, I'm just looking for hard-working people who like to get shit done like me. Well, it seems to be working. Um, as you were building the business, what were sort of the key decisions that you think were really critical for your success? 
bite-sized stuffed cupcakes. Very important. We, How that's you what get we to did. The size of the bite when, size. when we started Baked by Melissa, people were like, "What else do you sell?" Like just bite-sized stuffed cupcakes, and people thought it was crazy. Like, no, who goes into a bakery and just sees this one product? But I see the cupcake as my vessel for flavor, and I mean, I've taken all of my favorite desserts and made them into cupcakes, like s'mores and cornbread and chocolate chip banana bread and like peanut butter and jelly. Even I like to eat it as dessert. Um, what was the other thing? So what decisions have really been critical in your business? So that was one, right? That you're selling one product. Now we sell two. We have bite-sized double stuffed macarons. Yes, you do. And they are delicious. Thank Snickerdoodle you. is and my they're, favorite. they're inherently gluten-free. They're really, really good. Thank and you. I, I actually, I agree. I think they're fantastic. So thank you for bringing those to us. Um, but as you were going, and developing, there must have been things that didn't work out quite the way you planned them. So yeah. what went wrong and what did you learn from those? So most recently, we opened a gluten-free store on 7th Avenue between 38th and 39th. It was so silly to do. We actually opened it right next door to our existing fashion district location because we really wanted to offer a gluten-free product and show our customers who gave us life you know, that we take it very seriously, and if you are gluten-free or you have celiac, no cross-contamination, this store is dedicated to gluten-free. But what we realize is that we can have our gluten-free products available in all of our stores, just coming pre-packaged from our bakery. Um, and, you know, rent is very high in Manhattan, so after a few months of being in business, we realized that it wasn't going to be, um, financially responsible for us to keep the store open. So we, we closed it and I think that is just like a great lesson in business is to be able to recognize your mistakes and act quickly because if you don't, it could cost you your business. That's a very interesting learning. Um, tell us a little bit about your company culture. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it and what values do you really promote? Ah, uh, okay. So at Bakes by Melissa, we inspire and celebrate creativity. We are happy, passionate people who like really get to make people happy. Like that's what we work towards every single day. We, we sell a product or create a product that does nothing but make people happy and give you the opportunity to give a gift that does that too. And we know that and we appreciate that and we, like I said, work hard to get shit done, and since we hire people that are like-minded, like me and, and Matt, then we get to have fun, too, because we know we're gonna get our work done, and we look forward to the brainstorms and the fun stuff. It's all fun, it's great. I think the room would really benefit from hearing a day in the life of Melissa now. <laughs> it's pretty intense. You share that with us? You want today? Yeah, tell them, tell them what you do. Well, tell them what time you got up. Okay, fine. I was going to like look through my schedule. No, no. So today I woke up at 4.45. That's the time my alarm went off. But actually I woke up at 12.30 a.m. because my daughter was crying and she was like, Mama, Dad, Dad, yo-yo, which means yogurt. And she thought it was morning, I guess. <laughs> so first I, at 12.30 I went to her room and I said, No, Scotty, it's not morning. And laid on the floor for an hour. Then I went back to sleep and then my alarm went off at 4.45 and I went to the gym at 5.45 and then I came back and I showered and at 7 a.m. I dropped my daughter off at daycare and then I got on the path and then I had an 8.30 brainstorm to talk about all the amazing things we're gonna do for Halloween in stores and online and it's gonna be great. Uh, so fun, lots of eyeballs. Uh, lots of eyeballs. Then I had a photo shoot for like a magazine and then I had a bunch of other meetings and right before I left I was late because I was talking to my CEO about some important stuff and now I'm here. So tell us a little bit about your fitness regime because 4.45 sounds like a really it, that to me is the middle of the night, frankly. So it's for me too. No, it's not. How do you do I'm it? How do you get out person. of bed? 
I mean, I'm ready for bed at 4 p.m. 4.45 yesterday, I looked at my notebook and I was like, that's it, I'm done. Like, I'm not gonna get, I'm, like, like, I had a couple of other meetings on the calendar and I was like, good luck. Um, I am my best self when I am in shape. It's like just as much for my mental health as it is for my physical health. And also, if any of you have ever had a baby before, you know, it's nice to get back into shape and feel like your old self, the self you were before. So that was a lot of motivation. But I did that before I was pregnant. And I just love being in shape. I, like, growing up, I played all the sports. Like, you know, I, I take pride in that. Um, I was boxing for a while. Um, this, now I'm into running because I think, because I suck at it. I like to challenge myself. So, like, now my goal is to run an eight minute mile. Wow, that's impressive. I'm not there. I actually quit this morning before I got to a mile. I had to walk, but I walked at an incline. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you turn it off? How do you find some space to relax? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. No, I do. Do you turn off social media? Do you leave your phone in the kitchen? What do you, how do you, because it sounds like you go to bed. <laughs> well, it was, it's all about the whole package. At night, like after I've done everything, like, you know, nobody is harmed. Nobody's harmed. It, it, so you sleep really well. No, yes. I, I, I was having this, like, pain in my head and my neck and, like, the, for the past, like, three weeks. So I went to the dentist and they gave me um, Botox in my jaw because it's, like, that's where, like, all my stress goes. So, like, I'm, you know... It goes somewhere. Yeah, it goes somewhere. It goes here. But I feel so much today. It was the third day since I got it, and I feel so much better today. Good. Yeah. Now you all know if you're having that lockjaw feeling or pain, you know what to do. Ask I didn't know what it was. First, I went to City MD. I, MD, I thought I had an ear infection. Then I, find, then I thought I had a tooth infection. But it was just grinding my teeth and stuff. Stress. Yeah. Well, let's talk about food and the cupcakes a little more because okay. they're not stressful. So what surprised you the most about the food industry? Because it was new to you. Yeah. I love food. Like, food, food is my passion. And I've learned that even more since we started Bakes by Melissa. I love everything about the industry. It's always changing. It's highly competitive. And I'm so proud to be in business for nine years in this industry. Like, that is no easy feat. And I have an amazing team of people who... <laughs> Thank you. Um, what have I learned about the food industry? That it is always changing, and it is highly competitive, and it's super important to always be... People want new, like we, you know, we have a variety of flavors. We're always introducing new flavors. Macaron was... Macarons were a new product for us. I wrote this amazing cookbook. May be doing, so we also, I created six cupcakes to coincide with the launch of the book using recipes from the book that are amazing. We call them the dream team that you could already purchase in stores and online. We may be coming out with another product to coincide with the launch of the book that we're announcing on October 3rd, which is so cool. And like, what is most challenging about being in the food industry is what I love most about being in the food industry. It's that you have to innovate. Yeah, it's pushing. Yeah, you have to come up with new stories to tell and new products and show. Like, so we did like some market research recently, and like we learned that our customer loves that we have a variety of flavors were handcrafted. We, we create every single product is handcrafted. Literally, take every cupcake out of the baking pan, line it up on the tray, and there's a very specific way that they have to do it. Stuff every single cupcake, ice it, top it, drizzle it, all done by hand. And I could tell you who iced every single cupcake because everyone has their own style. That's crazy. Like, we, we just don't talk about it enough, you know? So it's just, it's, it's interesting. Well, you should talk about it because each one is a little work of art. And totally. I'm really happy, so it's a great story. Totally. There's so much. It's just you could always be better. Well, speaking of that, who else in the food space do you admire? Oh. 
I, I, so I learned so much from the Food Network and the Cooking Channel. <laughs> Like, especially when I was in college. I, you know, some people hate on her, but I loved Rachel Ray. We used to, like, hang out and watch, like, an episode of 30 Minute Meals and then go to Price Shopper in Syracuse, buy all the ingredients and make it at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, like, Iron Chef. Like, I mean, we live in such a digital age where, like, you can consume so much content. I, this is, I mean, so it sounds crazy, but I bet you're all the same way. Like, I admire Tasty and like all of the Instagram handles that I follow that are like creating food and there's just so much content that you could watch that inspires and I learned so much. Like every show I watch, um, every restaurant I go to. What's your favorite non-sweet thing to eat? <laughs> I really love all food. <laughs> I really, the, the grilled chicken salad at Hillstone is one of my favorite things. Okay, well tell us a little bit about the book. So you're obviously known for your iconic cupcakes. So why did you choose to write a cookbook about cakes? Well, <laughs> for one, nobody could buy a bite-sized cupcake pan. And I really wanted to share my I have so much in here. You know, I've been creating for nine years, just for Baked by Melissa, I've been creating cupcakes and macro and like everything for nine, I have so many things that I've created that I want to share, but really like I want to, my goal in this book is to empower the reader to bake outside the lines, as corny as that sounds, and really make it your own. People say that baking is an exact science and that's why they shy away from it, bullshit. It's so easy. My creative process is outlined in here. I have my one base vanilla cake recipe that I base everything off of. By like changing one or two ingredients, the possibilities are endless. So the book is laid out slightly differently. It starts by telling my story and how my dad, I have two amazing parents who empowered me to do everything and anything I set my mind to and I think that's super important and it's very fundamental, like basic shit that you need to, to like, do in order to be great, like have confidence in yourself and surround yourself with people who support you and love you. So that, that's in here. Um, the story baked by Melissa. And then it goes into like recipes. So you have, it starts with the vanilla cake recipe. And then of course there's this whole tie dye tutorial. And then all these different cake recipes, like and amazing pictures because the photographer for this book is the most talented human I've ever met, and you can look at this. The photos are really special. Um, and then after, after the cakes, it does the same thing for icings. It starts with vanilla icing as the base, and then gives you like 40 other icing recipes that you could do by changing one or two ingredients. And then at the end, I say, okay, now take these recipes and make your own cakes. So that's what I do. When I'm creating new flavors that bake by Melissa, I'll literally either on an open email, like a blank email, or like in my notebook, I'll write cake dash, icing dash, stuffing dash, toppings dash. And I'll just like mix and match everything. Like I have my chocolate cake, my yellow cake, my tie dye cake, my red velvet cake or peanut butter, banana, like anything, just from adding one ingredient. And maybe that will be good stuff with dolce de leche with uh, peanut butter, not even icing. Um, so that's kind of what the book is about. And then at the end, ooh, and then at the end, um, it gives you like little blanks. So I'll like give you all these different flavor combinations, like hundreds of them that I've created or I suggest creating. And then after that, it get, it's like the same thing, but with blank lines, because I want you to do it there and make your own. And I want you to like write in the book and like, I don't know, it's just fun. It's so inspiring. I hope so. It really is. So there are some entrepreneurs and founders in this audience tonight. Cool. And what do you wish you knew before starting Baked by Melissa that you think they might find useful? You can do anything. If, you're, if, if it's your priority and you're willing to work hard at it, you can accomplish anything, especially today, because we have the world literally at our fingertips. I taught myself how to make macarons in five days. 
like January 1st of 2012, which was my New Year's resolution. We want to sell macarons. Well, I'm going to figure out how to make them. And I went on YouTube and I watched all these videos and I, I made them. How did you make, how do you make them so small? Little dollop. That's easy. It's just the smaller dollop. And an icing it's tip. so yummy. The, you, it's impossible to not eat the at least five. The macarons are temperamental. They're like mean. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask a few more questions and then open up to the floor. But last year you became a mom. Mm. Two years ago. Well, two years ago. Yeah, she's... I'm, oh, I'm, so, I'm like seasoned professional now. How has that changed your worldview? I think it made me more at peace. Like there's something else that matters so much to me besides Bake Vimals and of course my amazing husband, but he's also involved in the company, so it's nice to have that balance. And I love working hard. I think the definition of success is happiness and the definition of happiness is working hard towards something you love. So she gave me the opportunity to work hard towards something else I love. Thank you for that. And then I just have to ask the last question, which I'm sure everyone wants to know. What is your favorite flavor of cupcake? Hmm. So I always say peanut butter and jelly. We have eight OG flavors, original grapes, that have been on the menu since we started the company, and peanut butter and jelly is my favorite OG flavor. But we just came out with the Dream Team, the six flavors that use recipes that are included in the book. And s'mores is actually also an OG flavor. We started, that was one of the first flavors. That's one of the cupcakes I baked to the day I was fired. So s'mores is in that pack, which is one of my favorites, but also sugar cookie dough, which was like, a great way to explain my creative process. I, I, I started making these sugar cookies. I like stuffed sugar cookies. Oh, they're so delicious. And I just like, like for one whole winter in the office, if I had like five minutes, I would bake sugar, these like stuffed sugar cookies for people. So I had to put it in a cupcake. So I took my sugar cookie recipe, took out the raw egg and used it as an icing, a stuffing. And then I made a sugar cookie dough topping. And that flavor is like bananas, but uh, it's so good. It's sugar cookie dough. Yum. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me tonight. We're going to turn it over to the audience. Do we have also or any... Yeah. Let's see. Is there a mic? Maybe I should just pass this to you. No, here we go. Who's going? Oh. What's it's the that? box and a mic. Wow. This is really cool. <laughs> it works. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for everything tonight. Um, I, I have never seen anything like that. <laughs> I'm really excited to hear from you because I have my own little food startup on the side, living in Manhattan. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm delivering everything by foot. I have a few customers right now. But I'm at the point where I'm looking for any guidance on how you would suggest. Like, I don't know if I should quit my full-time job and go all out for this because I know I could be doing so much more. But rent is so high here, and it's kind of just like a difficult transition. You're not sure as a 23-year-old you want to make yet, or what, you know, how did you kind of deal with that? What do you make? Salary-wise? No, your product. Oh, I was like, I was like, um. Let's get right into it. What's your product? What's your product. So I have an alternative cashew butter that I want people to eat as dessert. So. Yum. I don't yeah. call it cashew butter, but that's essentially what it is, and it's as sweet as a dessert to much. Cool. Time. So I guess <laughs> what I would say to that is that I did not start Baked by Melissa solely on my own. I, um, people are always asking me, like, oh, like, how much money did you raise? Like, I raised human capital. I surrounded myself with people who had skills that I didn't, the caterer, Danny, the restaurateur, yeah. uh, my brother, Matt, his co-founder. And I think that maybe it's worth, like, looking to engage people who have skills you don't. Um, when I started Baked by Melissa, I was still like meeting with headhunters looking for jobs in advertising because I never would have imagined being able to do it full time. And okay. I get I was at an advantage because I was fired from my job and I had that time. But um, it's also I mean, listen, if you quit your job and you do this and it doesn't work, you'll get a new job. So just like don't worry about it. Just do follow your heart, and as long as you do that, you'll be great. Thank you. Awesome. Who's next? Can I ask two? Please do. First uh -huh. question is, I know you've expanded beyond the cupcakes and the 
I call them macaroons, like a, macarons. I have to. <laughs> you've also done coffee, you've done the ice cream, and at one point you also did the muffins. Was there a reason those went away? You know your stuff. I'm a big fan. <laughs> so the ice cream was seasonal, and we're going to bring it back next summer, and I'm sad to see it go, but you know what? It's fine. We'll be super excited for it in the spring. Um, muffins were seasonal. It's something I wanted to try. Always like trying new and different. Great learning experience. We might probably bring them back again. Coffee, coffee is uh, like a whole operation. So we actually sold iced coffee all summer, which was great and delicious. It's actually my favorite coffee. It's Brooklyn Diamond, and you could there. She has a couple of stores around. Um, but again, it's seasonal, and the hot coffee in our stores, it's just like a beast, and it didn't make sense for us. We really want to focus on the cupcakes and macarons. Uh, what, were there any others that I didn't explain? But yeah, it's about trying new things and not being afraid to fail, because if you do fail, you're 100% gonna learn something from it. Um, so with each of those products, we learned a ton, and we'll most likely bring almost all of them back. Awesome, that's good to know. Second question is, how do you come up with the new flavors every month? Because I noticed for this many of the month, it's, I think, the Oreo and cookie dough, the double cookie, which I think you did last November. Did you bring it back because it was so popular? It was last September, too, I think. Or last September, you're right. It was either last September or last November. You I knew you. every day. <laughs> I've been tracking the many of the months for over a year. I collect I little cards. You. I would, too. I do. Oh, I do collect And I cards. guess, like, what is the flavor going to be? What is the color of the card going to be? <laughs> I mean, you're awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate your So support. I noticed you brought back the double cookie. Is that because it was so popular? Because it is a very delicious flavor. It was very popular. And, you know, my, my top priority is to create flavors that make people happy and they think are, like, amazingly delicious. And I'm never going to not bring something back just for the sake of creating new. And in September, I always like to create things that remind me of after-school snacks. Because, like everyone's going back to school so double cookies are so perfect for that and I look for, like I, I might bring it back again next September so um, right now it's funny I actually have an email open in my Gmail just Q1 and like have like a list of macaron flavors and I haven't gotten to cupcakes yet because I really want to come out with some new delicious macaron flavors which we are coming out with a new delicious one October 1st. Oh my God, it's my favorite one. It might be cotton candy, I don't know. Um, Have you ever created a flavor that bombed, that you thought was gonna be a huge success and really just didn't work at all? There are two flavors that come to mind that I didn't necessarily think they were gonna be a huge success, but it was worth a try. Um, so one was, um, Caramel apple. You know those like green caramel apple lollipops? They're so good. I made a cupcake version of it, but it wasn't, it didn't bomb, but we didn't sell nearly as many as we sell double cookie. Totally understand why. I've learned that people don't like love fruit flavors in their cupcakes, nor, nor do I. So you should probably just listen to that kind of stuff. Um, and the other one was very early on. I did a flavor called Choco Banana, Choco Banana, and I used uh, banana flavoring instead of real banana, which tasted like banana flavoring and not real banana, so I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but that's how you learn. If you don't make mistakes, you don't, you don't know what not to do and what you could have done better. So those two meh flavors made me create so many more that you love. So when you did peanut butter banana I think oh. a couple months back, that was real banana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I create flavors and my production manager is like, I'm going to kill you. Like, to like take the bananas, peel the bananas, puree the bananas. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Did someone, take, did someone else want to ask a question? Oh, common hobby. questions. Yeah. You. Uh -huh. I'll get you first. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a statement to say thank you. I have uh, two kids, um, and we live here in the financial district, and the kids go to school in the neighborhood, and when it's someone's birthday or a special occasion, it's awesome to get smaller, bite-sized cupcakes for kids. So when you said after school, that's pretty much where our entire school has been for the last couple of weeks is the Fulton location. Aww. So thank you for being inspiring to me and also to the kids because they love to bake. And seeing all the different flavors that you roll out is pretty cool. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And we like, we think of you 
Just so you know, when we create new at Baked by Melissa, we our goal is to make your life easier and also like inspire you too. Um, now that I'm a mom, like I can't even imagine giving Scotty like a full size cupcake and every single cupcake and macaron flavor is under 50 calories, which is like just something that's cool and I'm proud of. And we only use like the best like Hershey's fudge and peanut, Skippy peanut butter and Smucker's jam, like all real stuff, but it's just a bite. Thank you. There's a question over there. <laughs> Um, so I heard you mention a CEO and just surrounding yourself with human capital. So my question is, um, at what point did you come to the realization, I guess, that you should have a separate CEO and kind of how did that process roll out? How was it kind of letting go of that control? Because I feel like as a founder, that has to be kind of a hard thing to let go. I was in a very unique position because I started the company with my brother, my big brother. So I never really had control. You know, it's like always like a struggle for control. And actually, I remember so clearly, like when we were all co-founders, and nobody, like my advice would be just make sure everyone has clearly defined roles. So like we learned that as we were going. And I remember one day my brother was like, you know, I think I should be CEO. And I was like, great, I think you should be CEO too. And then he like, you know, like had that conversation with each of our co-founders, and he became CEO. He was our CEO for eight years. He's an entrepreneur. We needed a phase two CEO, and that was like a very daunting thing, you know? Like, how am I going to find somebody to replace my best friend and person I trust most in this entire world and my co-founder and, like, my brother? Um, and, and fortunately, we found someone who's, un like, amazing. And I think that, you know, you just have to put yourself out there and let people know what you're looking for, and trust your, your instinct. When I met Seth, our CEO, I met him, I met him once in the bakery, because my brother like, brought him, but at the time, like maybe he was gonna possibly be our CEO. When I met him, to really like see if he could possibly be our next CEO, like I knew right away. Like, it's like, you just know, and you have to trust that. Nobody knows better than you. Hi. Um, my question is kind of similar to that, but a little different. So you've mentioned that you work with several of your family members, your husband and your brother, who you obviously have such a great relationship with. I can tell by the way you talk about him. He's no uh, longer our CEO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, like, I'm right. so proud of the fact that we work together. And yes, but so, that was challenging, too. Gotcha. He so yeah, that's kind of what my question thing. is. Did that ever cause any, like, tension in your relationships with either of them, your husband, your brother? Um, did that has that has that hurt your, the relationships at all, or were there any struggles there? Because I ask because I'm just thinking um, of my husband who, like years down the road, has talked about maybe wanting to partner with friends and family, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't want to cause any like tension in those relationships. So I don't know. Coming from you, what do you think? I like to stir the pot, <laughs> and like it was hard. Hey, whoa, yeah, it's so hard. Oh my gosh, and yeah, it caused strain on all of my relationships. Um, I just wrote my, I like wrote a book to my brother and I said like no, like it is nearly impossible to be in business with your family, let alone your sibling. And I'm so proud of us from taking our experiences together and learning from them and allowing them to strengthen our relationship. Because that is hard, that is like, if you were to ask me the most challenging part, like that was the biggest challenge, but it's also the most rewarding. And with my husband too, like when you have a bad day at work and you're doing it with your family, or a challenging day, you know, no bad days, um, it's, it's challenging when you get home too. Likewise for the best days ever and the milestones and opening a new store, oh my God, it's like a family celebration. It's definitely not easy, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Awesome, thank you. Anyone else? Oh. Thank you. Hi there. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Um, I definitely have walked by and been like, oh, the uh, chocolate chip pancake and the cinnamon, that's breakfast, right? True story. Where are you? Oh, I'm right here. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, I'm also Melissa, so huge fan. Um, I was wondering, 
Um, and I don't know if this is controversial, but did you ever get bored of the same thing since it is mini cupcakes? And um, if so, and I have to feel like at some point it has to be a little bit frustrating when you're on your like hundredth batch. How did you um, just keep going forward? I, I mean, I've never gotten bored. I love what I love. I love what I do. I love dessert. I love cake. Like if you put cake in front of me, like. I just, I love it. It's, it's what I am most passionate about. Um, I love that we create new all the time. We have a mini of the month, we have seasonal flavors, we have promotional flavors, we're doing um, breast cancer awareness flavors, we're doing something else with the launch of the book, six new flavors. But there's, like, whoosh, there's always more to get done than I possibly can. And the product side of it is just part of it because I'm also, you know, the president of the company and overseeing marketing and sales and there's so much and I, sometimes I wish there were three of me. So um, when I am bored though, like I do tell myself sometimes like, oh, like crap, when I'm bored, I'm going to do this, which was actually when I'm bored, I'm going to come up with all the flavors for Q1, which I'm, I'm working on. So. No, it's in, I think it's like your own responsibility to make sure you don't get bored. Or use that like, you know, downtime as an opportunity to get shit done. Yeah. Okay, we have time for a few more. Yeah. Uh, two questions. I have twin daughters and I admire what you've accomplished as a woman. Thank you. So, uh, two questions. In the early days, you had just baking for fun. Did you experiment on recipes for your uh, cake? And secondly, what hurdles and how did you overcome those hurdles when you went from baking 20 cupcakes to thousands? <laughs> great, great questions. Um, yes, I experimented with the cakes. I mean, that was the biggest challenge in starting the company was getting the cake recipe perfect and the icing recipe perfect. Um, and like, base recipes that could take other flavors. I actually did that with my co-founder Matt, the one who came up with the logo in his apartment. Like we spent like a week, like we all hung out every night together anyway, but like for a week I just went to his apartment every night and we like really perfected that recipe together. Um, and then, I mean the mass, the scaling of product in, in general, that's just the one of the bigger challenges for me today in creating new is like yeah I could go home in my kitchen and I could bake anything and it's going to be amazing but being able to make tens of thousands of those that's a whole other challenge and I look at someone like Dominique Anzel who actually writes time is an ingredient like in his store and that's like the complete opposite of what we do um, but I think that like it just that's how I have to think, you know, like, can we produce this? And, and now, like, it's crazy. When we moved from Cafe Barry into our 10,000 square foot facility, teaching four people out of time how to take the cupcakes out of the baking pan and line them up on the silver tray, the 18 by 26 silver tray, that's like, the cupcakes have to be hugging because if they're not hugging then there's more surface area exposed to the air which causes them to get stale quicker and they have to move from being depanned to being stuffed as quickly as humanly possible because I want them in the freezer as soon as they're done and it, you just it's training and it's it's communication and I think that paired with really mastering the product allows us to mass produce things, I hate to say mass produce, but like produce scale um, that maybe other people couldn't. And I think that's like where I come in. Like that's what makes Baked by Melissa different. Like I'm in the bakery all the time making sure the product meets my standards and that everything is being iced symmetrically and beautifully and topped the way I want it. Like there's a specific way to top the cookie dough so you don't leave a fingerprint in the cookie dough on the top. Yeah. It has to be done right. So we have one more here, and then we're going to see if there's anybody on Facebook Live. Hi. Um, I wanted to understand in your early stages, I guess, what, what do you think gave you the most exposure? Was it working you know, through the caterers? Because you said that you know, he was a famous caterer. 
was it um, your your website and directing people you know through your website was it your social social media presence I'm going through the same phase right now so I'm not really sure which angle I should tackle on first interestingly enough when Bake Bam was started maybe Instagram existed but I didn't know about it so we didn't really do, and then when I started a Facebook account for Big by Melissa, I did it as like a human being and then they deleted it. So I think for, it was a combination of things that weren't social media at the beginning, but now social media is a great resource and you should 100% use it. It's about a consistent experience and an experience that is connected. So for me, I was cold calling catering companies and then I could deliver product and I would deliver business cards with it. So people would taste this product by picking up a card. I would direct them to my website, which would get a future order, which would enhance their brand experience. Um, our PR was amazing. The caterer was also like a PR um, genius or whatever. He like anywhere he went, he was like really big in the New York nightlife. He would bring the cupcakes. We gave away a ton of product. Um, which got us press, which would drive people to our website. Having e-com early on, even if it was just being you know, hand-delivered by me, allowed people to get our product delivered to them, which was before Postmates and Seamless. And you know, it's so crazy how much has happened since 2008 as far as technology and food. Now, like, if you're in the food industry in New York, of course you're on. Like, some people exist only on Seamless. But I think we were very much ahead of our time Mm -hmm. And now, and that's what I'm saying, like the food industry has become very competitive. And yeah. And I have one other question. Um, you said that you were making everything from your apartment, right? Um, so how did you handle that volume? Meaning, were you just making it, you know, on demand? And how did you handle the kind of the storage? And the second question was, you know, distribution and delivery, right? Who did you, did you outsource it? Did you actually, I can't imagine you walking, you know, door to door delivering it. I just. No, I did. I mean. You did? So I used like the linen closet to keep the flat boxes and the stickers in it. I baked every single cupcake and I baked per order because like crazy about freshness. Um, and sometimes it was back breaking work. I remember the biggest order I received in the first year we were in business was, it was like on September 21st of 2000. And ate Google like I like somehow did a tasting with the chef at Google and he ordered 500 cupcakes he wants me to come in and be guest chef at Google and I it, I remember like just being in a lot of pain because I was like doing everything myself um, but I did it and, and then like my brother of course would come and help me or Matt and or Ben and you know we would they would help out any way they could but at the time nobody can make the product except for me um, but that's the best problem to have if you can't make your product fast enough and that's when you hire people to help you. But I, I mean, I was an assistant media planner before we started Baked by Melissa, so management was not my strong point. So I was very, and it, you know, I wanted everything to be done perfectly. So I literally did everything I possibly could. Even when we hired our first employee, delegating was not my strength. Now I'm very good at it and I understand that you can't do everything and you need to have a team of amazing people, but like, that's all a process. <laughs> okay, I think that's gonna be it. Well, one more. Sorry. Um, I'm also starting my own business, and one of the things that I struggle with is like knowing when to take the leap forward, like, or if it actually does any more work. So I thought it was really interesting that you sent the cookie, or the sent the desserts to Alison Broad, and you didn't have like a website or logo. Like, what made you take that risk without it? <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it being a risk. I, I think like instead of seeing things as risks, maybe try and see them as opportunities because I think one of the things that I do so well is take advantage of opportunities. I know that when you have an opportunity, you're not going to get it again. It's this one chance. So even if you're not, even if you don't feel like you have a perfect product, that's your one chance. Do it. You have nothing to lose, only gain. Um, I think like Facebook in their in their like core values, there's like one of their core core values says something like about not being perfect, just get it done. And I think that especially when you're doing something on your own, you have to just like get it done and move on. Thank you.
Okay, speaking of Facebook, are there any questions? No? Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Melissa. You are a star. Thank you. All. We cannot wait to see where you're going to go. This is just the beginning. Thank you.